The following situation might sound familiar to you. You have chosen a TFT display and now you need to get a modern looking graphical user interface to smoothly run on this system. And of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You've got your own program code to write for your application and then both needs to seamlessly interact. And in case you've only got little time to make this happen, well, you're probably facing a real challenge. But for a quick start into such a development, for quick results and a final product that you can use in mass production, we've got a solution. And this solution is called Smart Embedded. A Smart Embedded TFT display, such as this seven inch version, in this case with power over ethernet in a couple of very common interfaces. And this has got to do with this piece of software. My name is Manuel Krause, I'm product manager at Glynn and I'm happy you joined us today because over the next few minutes I'd like to show you what this solution is all about, especially on the software end. So let's get started. Here we are in Touch GFX Designer. Before we can launch a new project, we need to choose the right template or board support package, in this case for a 7-inch model. We give this project a title and we're good to go. This is the startup screen or screen number one. We define the background color and right away we do the same for screen number two. Now we place an image, in this case a logo, dead center. Touch GFX provides very useful alignment guides. Let's start with a very basic animation. We change the alpha channel to zero, which turns the image invisible. And here in the right pane we define a so-called interaction. The way we configure it is, once the system starts up and we enter the screen, the image fades back in until it's fully visible. In other words, the alpha channel goes back to 255. This interaction triggers another interaction, namely automatically switching to screen number two, which is going to be our main menu. Let's give this screen a title so the end user knows what screen or menu he's looking at. We drop in a text box and create a new font, which we'll use from now on for these boxes. Next, we place three interactive buttons, each with its own title. They could, for example, take us to submenus or other pages. In this case, we don't choose any of the default buttons that come with TouchGFX, but we use a custom button that we created in Photoshop. Such graphical elements can be easily imported as PNG files. We also set up a third screen and link that one to the top button. On screen number three, we'll set up an icon as our home button. Tapping on that one will bring us back to the main menu. And again, we'll drop in a text box by simply copying and pasting from an existing screen. But of course, when developing a real project, we would pay attention to how we name each element so that it makes sense and can be easily identified in our code later on. On the left, we have a number of widgets at our disposal. We pick a slider and a circle as well as another text box. But these elements can change their values or statuses dynamically. We set the start value to 100. This comes in handy when using the slider to, let's say, dim the backlight. In this case, we would start with full brightness or 100. And again, we have to configure an interaction. So let's put in some C++ code, which of course you could also do in your IDE. Probably makes more sense to do it that way. However, for the sake of this presentation, we'll do it here. The function links the change of the slider position to the circle and the text box. Right, now is a good time to check if our user interface works properly. We tell TouchGFX to create the code for us. And there's a nice little feature called Simulator. After compiling the code, it creates and starts an executable, a tiny program that mimics the application 
which will later run on the target hardware. So this gives us an idea of what it will look like later on. Next, we set up screen number four. For a change with a darker background, you know the drill. We place a text box in the corner as well as a home button so we can get back to the main menu. Here in the main menu, back on screen number two, we'll need another small button, which we are going to use for a neat little widget. This widget is called Slide Menu. As the name suggests, we can put some graphical elements in this box, which then appear or rather slide into the view area. In this case, we drop in three small standard buttons that come with the Touch GFX library. We give them a title right away. The top button we will link to the screen four that we just created. In the properties pane on the right side, we change its default state to collapsed. This way, the widget is not visible, but only appears once we touch the gear icon. By means of this interaction, we configure it to slide in from left to right. And here we go, screen number four. Our last widget is the so-called swipe container. This one contains elements which you could, for example, swipe from left to right. Pretty useful for a touch display like the 7 inch we're using. We choose a scalable placeholder, which will drop into this container. And this we can do multiple times, simply by copying and pasting. Each time we fill the placeholder with a different image. And that's how quickly you can fill this container with six different pages. Now we tell TouchGFX to update the code, start the simulator one more time to make sure our swipe container and the slide menu behave just the way we want it to. That's it, done. I hope you got an idea how easy it is to create your own application with a smart embedded display and the TouchGFX designer. Those displays are available in different sizes, such as 4.3, 5, 7, and 10 inch. Please check out our website. There you'll find more information about smart embedded displays. And if you're interested in a starter kit or you have questions, feel free to call us or send us an email.